Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, welcome to the channel and welcome to the conference. Um, this morning's topic is, is it a wise decision to seek advice from co-workers and involve them in your personal lives? Well, this seems to be a huge problem within various workplaces where some people, because they have been conditioned under the frame of mind due to high school experiences, um, they, that, um, they should befriend people and be accepted in social circles and um, feel that their peers are their friends and have their best interests at heart. They've been so conditioned within the public school system that when they step into the adult world, they continue that pattern even after graduation or for those that may have dropped out or for those who may have gone to colleges to gain their GEDs. It is not the fact that they did not accept their diplomas and their certificates of completion. It's just that they did not change their frame of mind after they completed that cycle within the public school system. They continued to think along the grounds of um, wanting to be accepted and feeling as if uh, the people around them have to be involved in their lives, be involved in their personal lives, their decisions, their um, per career pursuits and things of that nature. When in actuality, after you leave the public school system, um, there should be some sort of transformation that takes place, which is called maturity, you know, and you should know that you're now in the adult world, you know, and you're not around the people that you uh, came up around in the public school system. Um, oftentimes people that continue the frame of mind of this is my friend and that is my friend and we're this, that, and the third are people, maybe they had some level of popularity in the public school system. Or even for people, if you um, did not have friends in the public school system, most of the time the people that... Um, Maybe they weren't as sociable in the public school system. When they step into the adult world, um, they're, they are able to adjust a little better because, you know, they, they've they never been under that frame of mind. You know, oh, I, I need all these friends, well, fake friends, or I need to be accepted. They don't have that in them. So when they step into the adult world, I think they adjust a little better because the adult world is not necessarily always about somebody holding your hand or a group of people being around you or having a click or being clickish or having an entourage. You know, stepping into the adult world is about discovering who you are as an individual and making your way throughout this thing we call life. Okay, but then there are people that, you know, may experience a little difficulty adjusting to the adult life. So they continue that friendship of mind and they continue the patterns of feeling as if they have friends and and things of that nature whereas when you step into a work environment the sole purpose of stepping into a work environment is to be able to obtain the funds that you need to survive and maintain your lifestyles on this planet now a lot of people may disagree I don't care I for me the objective when I deal with an employer is my money and nothing else and I, I don't feel like that you should pursue a pursue a job solely based on um, I feel like this you should pursue what you like to do but first and foremost it's all about the Benjamins for me. I don't know about you guys, but it's all about the Benjamins. Yes, you want a job that's fulfilling and you definitely would want a career that's fulfilling. But you know what? First and foremost, let's just face it. You got to pay your bills out here in this world, okay? If you all are not married or in relationships where you really don't have to work, but you choose to work, then you have some sort of debt in this world, okay? So let's just face it. I mean... To me, people who come to the work environment with the frame of mind, oh, I want to make friends, that's somebody that um, I feel you need to elevate yourselves a little better. And you need to, well, how can I put it? Uh, you need to gravitate a little more 
towards an independent mindset and knowing that you are no longer in a school setting and that the people around you come from all walks of life. And just because people may appear in your faces to be nice and friendly, that does not, number one, it doesn't mean they like you. Number two, it doesn't mean they have your best interests at heart. It just means, hey, how you doing? Chatter, 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 talk, talk, talk. That's all it means. Gossip, gossip, gossip. You know, but a lot of times people can translate that into friendship when it is not. You know, most of the time I believe, you know, there are people that have made friends within the workplaces. But, you know, let's just face it. We live, we're living in the last days nowadays. And everybody, as far as being a snake, is suspect until they prove themselves to be otherwise. And I feel that it is never a wise thing to involve people that are in the workplace in your personal lives unless you know for sure that that person is a true blue now if you have become acquainted with somebody and you know for sure what that person or those individuals characters are that you all are like-minded individuals they seem to be decent people they're the type of people you wouldn't mind inviting over to your homes for dinner you all exchange gifts for birthdays for holidays and things of that nature and you and you can really get in touch with their spirit hey fine you know i'm definitely not one against making friends but i feel like as far as entering into the workplaces and telling them your personal business and discussing your relationships and your marriages and your situationships to me that's a no to me that's a minus you understand because the only thing that you're doing is setting yourselves up to be the topics of gossip and the topic of um other people's discussions because oftentimes you know uh, when you're dealing with those types of people, they don't have lives of their own. They have drama and dysfunction going on in their lives, but they want to focus on your life to distract themselves from what they lack in their own lives, okay? Or what they have to deal with when they go home. You understand? All the chaos, all the confusion, all the dysfunction, all the physical and verbal fights, all the name calling. You know, a lot of people are living in... Um, uh, disgusting environments, nasty houses, um, where they have lazy spouses. Either they don't want to work, they don't want to cook, they don't want to clean, they don't want to take care of the children. They look bad, they smell bad, they don't groom themselves properly, and they have to go home and deal with all of that. And coming into the workplace is a temporary getaway from all of that, okay? Coming into the workplace is like another world for them, where they have the opportunity to obsess, talk, gossip, and spread lies about other people's lives so that they don't have to focus on their own raggedy lives, okay? And I say raggedy because a lot of people, the average person that gossips, gossips about other people and spread lies and rumors and things of that nature, they have the they have the filthiest, most raggedy lives that you could ever imagine. If you could really, like, be a fly on the wall, so to speak, or look into their lives, look into their homes, you would say, how in the world can somebody like you put your mouth on anybody with what you've got going on behind closed doors you know so no i don't feel no it is never a good idea to involve people in the workplace in your personal lives in your marriages in your relationships and things of that nature because number one you know just because people stand around and talk to you and things that doesn't that doesn't mean that you know they want what's best for you it doesn't even mean they like you and i think people really need to get off of that that trip thinking that just because people conduct themselves in an action of appearing to be buddy buddy that they are your buddy because nine times out of ten maybe even ten times out of ten that person is not you know a lot of times um, a lot of you are befriending people that are even working behind the scenes to try to get you all fired and you don't know it okay a lot of times you're dealing with people or groups uh, they're running back and forth um, talking trash about you to the supervisors and to the managers and things that, of that nature trying to jeopardize your jobs and you don't even know it because when you know you see them they're like hey how you doing what's up yo da 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 what's popping it or whatever you know whatever the saying is nowadays you know and you don't even know that's a wolf in sheep's clothing you don't even know that's a Judas you don't even know you know and no so it is never a good idea to um, bring your business and your personal life into the workplaces. And me personally, I've never done it. I've never done it, you know, and uh, I, it, it's just never, it's just, to me, it's never been a wise thing to do, you know, because, you know, people, uh, people don't care about you, you know, and I'm just speaking in general uh, and, and, you know, to people in general, people, I put it this way, people in general can take this information and apply it to their lives. People don't get two cents about you. Because, you know, I, I, what I've experienced in my life is uh, when, when a person gets fired from a job, oftentimes um, the people that grinned in that person's face when they were on the job talks about them like a dog once they get fired. 
It's like after they get fired, well, da 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 da, and da 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 da, and number and whatever you've told them, they're gonna tell everything you told them. Okay, so you know, uh, to me, that's always been a no. I've seen too much mess go on in various workplaces to ever trust anybody in the workplace. And if you do make a friend or a couple friends, most time it will be a, a very small pool. Um, you better know who they are. Now, maybe back in the days, way, way back in the days, people had friends on the job and, you know, people that were just down to earth and good hearted and caring and things. But understand, we are living in the last days. People are different now than they were in our grandparents' day or in our, our parents' day. People are different. We're dealing with a totally different generation now, okay, where people are cutthroat. And they don't want you to get ahead. And there's a lot of jealousy in the workplace, especially for people. If you are uh, attractive people out there, if you're intelligent, if you dress nice, you carry yourselves in a decent professional manner, you will be a threat to somebody. I don't care who you are. You know, it's not that you might be. No, you will be. And you are. You may not know who the person is, but you are a threat. And I would say the closest person to watch is the one that's grinning up in your face the most. Because, see, that's the one that has something to hide. So they overcompensate by being overly friendly for the player hate and the jealousy and the envy that they have in their hearts towards you. Okay? So you got to watch people. And um, also, you know, be mindful of people that um, you share your home life information with because they're going to bring your business into the workplaces i know you all may think that they're not but unless they are sure enough a true blue you will be the topic of discussion because just as you feel they are a good friend to you there may be somebody in the workplace that they feel is a good friend to them and they're going to pour out everything they're going to spill their guts so to speak to that person about your lives and whatever you have going on in your lives okay so i mean it is never a good idea to bring your business into the workplace. And I also don't feel it is a good idea to seek advice from people in the workplace because even in doing that, you are still involving people that you don't know in a situation that they really have nothing to do with, which is your personal lives. Unless you involve them in it, you know, but I'll just say, I'll word it, reword it, they shouldn't have anything to do with, you know. Um, it's a huge mistake. People can look at it any type of way that they want. It's a huge mistake. I think that um, when people come on the job, they should be business minded. You go in there, you perform the task at hand, you make your money, you leave and leave it at that. And whatever takes place in the workplace, you leave it there. You don't take it home with you. Okay. And to me, that's a psychological power that people should have that whatever happens, it's kind of like what they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Isn't that a saying? Well, what happens in the workplace stays in the workplace. You don't take it into your personal lives because if you do, you are, you are intertwining two worlds that sort of are linked, but really have nothing to do with each other. Okay. And, and I feel like the same way with people's home lives. You don't take the things that are going on in your home life into the workplace. You are intertwining two different worlds. You have to learn to compartmentalize your lives. Okay. This is personal life. This is business life. This is social life. This is whatever life, you know, compartmentalize. And then that way you don't involve, you know, two three or four different worlds within one another that don't belong together, okay? Because the people on your job uh, have no business um, in your business. They just don't. It, it, it is what it is. And I'm not saying that you can't make friends. I'm not saying that people won't inquire about your lives. But if you feel like people are overstepping their boundaries or overstepping your boundaries, you have every right to tell them that's none of your business. And if you want to say it like just blatant like that you can or if you want to say oh i don't discuss my personal life you can say it like that and if they get offended so what so what because there's, there's a such thing as respect and there's some things that people should have the common sense to know not to ask some things i think are fine to ask but a lot of times there are people out there that just don't operate basic common sense and they will ask you things that are outright blatantly none of their business you know and you have every right to tell them well i if you want to be kind with it, you could just a little nicer, softer with it. You could say you don't discuss your personal lives or you could just say that's really none of your business. But I, I, that, to me, that sounds a little cutthroat to tell somebody, well, that's none of your business. I would word it like I don't discuss my personal life and leave it at that. OK, because nine times out of 10, after you tell them that they will get offended and they'll go to somebody else and try to be like, well, 
find out stuff about you, okay? Because you just struck them down by putting them in their place that they should have never stepped out of in the first place, okay? Because a lot of times what you almost realize is that um, people that uh, inquire about you in the workplace and people that a lot of you think are your friends, uh, they're also friends with your workplace enemies, okay? And uh, I think most people have workplace enemies, okay? You may not know who they are for some of you because they're projecting themselves towards you as friends. They are wearing the image, the face, the facade of a friend. But um, like I said, the ones that are just too overly bearing, you know, hi, and this, and that, and third, that's the one to watch because that's the one that may have been sent by your enemies to try to get the 411 on you, okay? You have to be sober and you have to be vigilant in every setting. In these last days, you can't really trust anybody. Trust has to be earned, okay? And also, okay, now let's... Um, go towards another topic as far as workplace dating okay a lot of people have the golden rule do not date anyone that you work with a lot of people have that rule and they stand on it I think that's a good idea but for those of you that um, if you uh, meet people in the workplace that you want to date I would advise you all if you're gonna date that person and <laughs> nobody in the workplace should know Nobody in the workplace should know because it causes drama and it causes confusion, especially for you ladies out there, you know, because a lot of times if you meet a man in the workplace and he has taken a liking to you all, well, the average man has workplace hoes, okay? You may not know who they are or you ladies may know who they are. I don't know, but they're not going to be too happy about somebody that was once their love interest or their sex interest now taking an interest in you and that can cause a lot of confusion in the workplace a lot of unnecessary drama a lot of this a lot of that and then you know in a lot of situations you got dudes in the workplace places that are trying to play women against one another that that goes on you got people in the workplaces that are having sets with each other outside of work and you know they bring that drama into the workplace and you got and now it's just a whole ball of confusion um I've, I've seen it in various workplaces where um, people would even get sexually involved with people that they work with. Um, I won't elaborate because in the workplace, different workplaces I've been in, I don't, if somebody, if they hear this video, I don't want them to think I'm trying to put them out there like that, okay? But I have just heard talk of uh, people, you know, doing things, you know, uh, in the workplace. I'm talking about like, in the facility or whatever you want to call it or even outside you know in the it just totally inappropriate behavior for the workplace you know but like I said we live in a different world now people weren't they're not raised like they used to be raised you know back in the day you know if you are a back in the day type person you're just not gonna understand why people are the way they are now the only thing you can do is stay away from it and stay away from the people you know stay away from the drama but um yeah, you just have to be careful because, you know, you must understand, especially for you ladies. If you have sex with a man <clears throat> in the workplace, always remember that there's a possibility that your relationships may not work out. And when your relationships don't work out, you still have to come to work to make your money. And you still have to see that man. And nine times out of ten, he will be grinning up in some other female's faces, or other female's faces rather, to make you jealous. You're not gonna you're not gonna really be too fond of that, especially if you've had sexual relations with him. And and for some of you ladies out there, maybe if you've fallen in love with these men, I don't know. But you're not gonna be too happy about that. You're not gonna be too happy about him uh, you know, flirting with other women, uh, having sex with other women in the workplaces, you know? And and there have been situations that um I've seen with other people. I, I've never experienced it. But um I you know. No, I know how to conduct myself in the workplace professionally. But um, where there was a situation where, um, I'll go on and share this because I don't know these people and they don't know me. But um, there was this girl from what I was told, and okay, and I'm not saying this is law, this is hearsay, but I will still use it as an example to show you ladies what can happen. She had uh, sex with some guy that she worked with. He came back to work. And told all the other dudes what went on between them sexually. Okay? And she was so humiliated that she quit the job. 
okay? And uh, this was many years ago. And somebody came and told me about it. And uh, I just remember, I don't know who the girl was. I, don't, I didn't know the guy. I didn't know them, okay? But I remember just feeling so bad about what happened to her. And having and for her to have to walk through that. And for that dude to do that. So I'm thinking if he did that, evidently there was no relationship involved. Maybe they just, it was just like a hit and quit or something like that. So ladies, be careful out there of these men that operate like foxes. And Because yeah, I know it's flattering when a man takes an interest to you. And he tells you you're fine or you're this. He, can he get your number and all this, that, and the third. But you got to exercise your mind over emotions or your mind over your sexuality okay because you don't want to have to end up getting a job and quitting a job because you had sex with the rock with somebody on your job and now they're trashing your name and your reputations and you end up having to quit your jobs and that was many years ago but for some reason i have not forgotten that that somebody told me that you know how sometimes people can tell you something and you may not remember anything else about that particular day but that one event or that one thing that somebody told you and you can't understand why is it sticking in my mind i maybe because it's something you're supposed to share with somebody else later on in life i don't know because like i said i don't know who these people were but and i don't even rem remember the person who told me but i know I, I somebody told me that you know and um i just remember like just thinking you know just i don't know what i was thinking like i guess just how disgusting people are how could people just do that but see evidently he didn't have any respect for her because maybe she gave it up early and see that's another thing uh not to get off topic but a, a mistake ladies make you give it up too early ladies you give it up too early, I'm telling you. When you give it up early, you're just a vagina. And it is what it is. Because you have not given him time to involve his emotions. If he involves his emotions, nine times out of ten, most likely he will not disrespect you afterwards. Okay? Because he'll he'll love you. He'll have a he'll have a feeling for you. You know. But if you give it up early, you know, early on, he's gonna look at you like you're a whore. Because he's gonna say, Well, you you he's gonna assume you do it with every dude because he's gonna be like well you know it's like that song what what the pop say he don't want it if it's that easy i'm telling you that's how men are if it's easy they'll take it but they're not gonna respect it if that makes sense to you ladies okay they'll take it i don't think and most men some men may but the average man is not gonna turn down that you know unless he's in a committed relationship and he's definitely in a committed relationship and serious about his lady or his wife but um most men i don't think they respect women that give it up like that so just be careful especially in the workplaces okay and uh i would advise you all to um keep your relationships out of the workplace if 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 you're gonna date because i there i remember i think back in the day there were actually businesses that did not allow people to date if they work together now i don't know how they thought they could control somebody's life like that but um i think that uh i remember some companies where somebody may have told me or i may have heard i don't know who these people are telling me this stuff but that um they they didn't want the people inside the workplaces to date or something i think i think okay so don't quote me on it but i'm still trying to figure out how they think they can control what people do after hours <laughs> after work hours i don't know but you know how different companies are you know they have different rules but not that anybody follows them but you know hey because let me tell you one thing about men and women men are going to be with who they want to be with women are going to be with who they want to be with men are going to sleep with women if they want to and women are going to sleep with men if they want to it's been going on since the beginning of time and just because you enter a workplace that doesn't mean that's going to stop okay but um the only thing i'm i'm doing is saying that um I'm just saying if an, if an employer is trying to stop that, I don't. that's not something I feel they can stop. Because after you hit that clock and clock out, or for you all that work in uh, those types of environments, or after you leave for the day, if you work in a, a clerical environment, or whatever you do for your occupations, after you leave those grounds, that's your life. Your life is your life, you know? And what you do is your business, you know? And uh, so anyway... Um, let me see if I can think of any other topic to, to uh, cover regarding that. I just feel like um, 
What happens in your homes and your marriages should stay there. What happens in your relationships should stay there. You know, if you bring them on your job, you're adding extra confusion in your lives. Because I'm telling you, if you think that there are not any snakes and serpents and all sorts of just wickedness going on in the workplaces, you can think again. But I think that most people know what's popping in their environments. It doesn't matter what type of occupations you have. It could be clerical. It could be manufacturing. It could be uh, retail. It could be um, you run your own businesses. Uh, Anytime you got a group of people together from all walks of life, there will be some level of confusion in there. That's why you have uh, supervisors and managers to manage not only the jobs, but to supervise what they're supposed to supervise and manage uh, what goes on between the people that are in there. Because they, you know, you don't want a bunch of ghetto mess and craziness going on in the workplace because it is supposed to be about you making money and the company making money okay but like i said some people they bring that high school mentality in there and you know in a lot of uh places they click up like they're still walking around in high school down the halls and past the lockers and going to the cafeteria and hanging out on the playgrounds you know things and you know it, it should it, a lot of people they just don't evolve they don't uh, mature from that you know and um for those of you that are you have to be around that. I mean, you just, uh, just if 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 you are a professional person, keep it professional for yourselves, you know, and just uh, separate and <laughs> come out from among them and be ye separate. That's all I can tell you all, you know. But um, yeah, I just don't understand people that bring their business in the workplace. You know, I just don't. And like I said, you know, when I have my conferences, I don't tell. I don't, I'm not telling people what to do because people are adults. I'm try. I'm only trying to speak to the people that are indecisive about um, what to do or, de or decision to make. Or a lot of people just don't know the right decisions in life to make. And they need maybe just a little bit of guidance, a little helping hand from somebody that, you know, may have knowledge, wisdom, and have uh, seen other people experience um, certain outcomes as a result of making unwise choices within work environments, okay? Because, you know, ladies, I'm telling you, um, a lot of these men that you may involve yourselves with, now a lot of people know what's going on, but a lot of women may not know that a lot of these men are married, they have families, they have children, they have whole other lives outside the workplace. And you are just like their little fantasy thing while they're in the workplace, on the clocks or whatever, you know, while they're, you know, supposed to be clocking dollars or whatever, but they wanna clock you, you know? And a lot of them, they will lie and or they will withhold the truth, which is sort of the same thing. I mean, they're not conveying something that they should convey. But a lot of them, a lot of these men are married, you know. Um, and they just, you're the side pieces and you all just don't know it. And, you know, they're, they, they, and not only are you the side pieces, but they have a relationship with their wives. They have relationships with other women that are out in society. And they want one with you all, okay? So just be very careful, ladies. Be very careful, okay? Because when you work, when you walk into the workplaces, you're like prey. That's the reason why for when, uh, uh, what I've observed in various, well, not various, but what, what I've observed in workplaces is um, when it's a new chick on the block, so to speak, all the guys, not all the guys, but a lot of the guys flock towards her. Okay, and then when she gets old, another chick comes in, then they flock towards her. And then when she gets old, it's like a re repetitive cycle. And a lot of these dudes that's doing the flocking, they're married, they're in relationships, they have girlfriends, they have girlfriends or a girlfriend. Okay, so just keep in mind what you're dealing with and what's standing up in your faces. And just know that, um, you know, if you decide to ever uh, involve yourselves with these men sexually, there's a strong possibility that it won't be kept between just you and that person, that their workplace buddies will know, uh, their buddies that they have outside of work will know, um, their wives will most likely, or their girlfriends will be most likely the last ones to find out, okay? And that will probably be either through accident, by chance, or you know, I don't know, some chicks in the workplaces are bold enough to contact the woman and be like, hey, is she sleeping with the woman's husband or sleeping with the woman's boyfriend? You know, especially if she wants the woman, uh, excuse me, wants the man, 
you know, and, um, you know, she's become ruthless about it. You know, like he's now her man and she's going to call that woman up and let that woman know, you know, he might be her husband, but you know, she's the one she's, she's sleeping with him. And see, that's the cause his wife to leave him so she can have him. As you all know, you know, y'all know what's going on in this world. We live in a very sick world, you know. People don't respect marriage. They don't respect people's spouses. It's just a very sick world. And they don't know how you get them is how you lose them. Okay? How you get them is how you lose them. So, you know, you're trying to take somebody else's man. You will. Somebody's going to take him from you. Because if he was so easily led astray towards you from her, he will be easily led astray to another woman from you. It, it, you know, it's, it's just what it is. You know, that should be basic common sense. A man like that is not commitment material and definitely not husband and uh boyfriend material okay and um there was something else that come to mind i wanted to say before i closed out um oh my gosh um i can't remember what it was so i'll probably have to <clears throat> make a separate video i think there was something else trying to come to mind but um i just want to tell you ladies uh you know uh just be careful about uh involving yourselves with people in the workplace because I'm telling you, you you're sharing men left and right you're sharing men like crazy out here you really are and uh they are without a conscience a lot of them I'm not saying all of them okay I know you can't judge everybody by you know a couple of bad apples but they're without a conscience no no guilt about it because see you got to understand a lot of people are in bad marriages and they're hiding it. A lot of people are in bad relationships and they're hiding it. And so, no, they don't respect the person they're with. They don't even want to be with that person. You know, a lot of times, but they have to be for financial reasons. And you are their avenue of escape temporarily, even if it's just for a couple of hours within the workplaces. They can get away from that spouse or that girlfriend or that boyfriend that they cannot stand. They cannot stand that person. But they like you. They like you all, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Well, I mean, but but if they go out and talk about you like a dog, evidently they don't like you. You're just a piece of meat in their eyes. So just be mindful because, you know, we live in a very deceptive world. You just never know. You don't, you just don't know who people are nowadays because you can't see into their heart. You know, the only thing you can do is try to try their spirit for you Christian ladies out there. But for you women out there that are not Christian, meaning you're not believers or whatever. Um, be careful. Be careful, you know. Um, just be careful. And then I know some chicks, that's, they don't care. That's how they get down, you know. I'm not talking to whores. I'm not talking to um, females on the job that, um, you know, and they don't care about their reputations and they don't care if a man screw them and dump them and they don't care um, if the man is married and has a, has a girlfriend. They know and they don't care. I'm not talking about those types of females. Um you know, I mean, why should I be? <laughs> I'm not talking about them because, you know, they're rolling just like the dude is. I mean, the dude is a whore and they're a whore. So, hey, maybe, you know, whatever. But I'm talking about women out there that are being deceived. Or maybe you're making bad decisions and you need to, you know, you need to, you need to, you need to just stop. You need to stop yourselves before you wreck yourselves. Check yourselves before you wreck yourselves. Okay. And destroy your lives or destroy your careers or your um, workplace um, situations, okay? It, I, I just feel like um, relationships and, th and things of that nature are not for the workplace. Because don't you know that people that are um, drama-filled, they feed off of things like that? They feed off of things like that. You know, oh, you know, did you know, oh, I, they hooking up? I didn't know they was hooking up. Oh, oh, I, oh, I think they messing around. Oh, I, I think they, oh, oh and this and, and oh, I can't stand people like that. Oh, 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 oh this and, oh, 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 that. Get a life. Get a life and get out of everybody else's. I mean, I can't stand people like that. Everything is a this and a that. And a, t -t 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 -t, you know, whatever. Stupid. <laughs> Just absolutely stupid. No life. And then, you know, they sit there and they worry about the lives of you all. But they're not going to tell you about their own ridiculous lives and jacked up marriages. And oh, if you want to call that junk a marriage that a lot of people are in. That raggedy mess. For a lot of people, that mess was over years ago. And they're just together because they're codependent. Because they can't afford to live alone. They can't afford it. 
And oftentimes, the people that can't afford to live alone, they're concerned about other people. And they can't even afford to pay their bills by themselves. That's why they're in those raggedy relationships that they're trying to act like it's so much all of that. And it's not. You can see it, see it in some people's faces. They're miserable. Some people, they probably don't even want to leave the workplaces because they know what they got to go back home to. Fussing, fighting, and a hell raiser. You know, but anyway, I think that's all I wanted to convey to you all in this conference. I can't think of anything else. And like I said, I don't try to make up anything more than what has been deposited in me to give to you all. Okay. So um, with that said, God bless you all until next time. I would advise you all that so desire. Keep your lives, your relationships, your situationships, and your marriages private, private, private. Okay. And then that way you don't have the... Into outside interferences and people trying to tear you all apart, especially for those of you that have very healthy, productive relationships, because people that are in dysfunctional relationships will envy that and they will try to tear you guys apart. OK, so I believe business life is business life. Personal life is personal life. You have to learn to compartmentalize. OK, so with that said, God bless you all until next time. Bye bye.